These two hives, when I put nukes in them, they have VSH queens. Um, that stands for, uh, why did I just forget it? <laughs> Basically, they're resistant to varroa, varroa mites. The problem is, I don't honestly know if the original queens are in there. And right now is the time you would normally treat a hive if you were going to be if you were going to be treating the hive for mites now would be the time to do it you're kind of in between summertime and the fall nectar flow so what I've got to do, I've also got an issue with these hives have the two brood boxes are stuck together. The two brood boxes are stuck together. So I need to fix that too because I'm going to be using Apivar strips. I'm going to be using Apovar strips, and that requires to have two strips in each of the deep boxes. Now, I've got a bunch of stuff today that I don't normally have, and because I'm going to be going really deep into this hive, I also have just some rubber gloves because anytime I ever got stung by bees is always on my fingertips. So, just some rubber gloves. I'm going to have to basically take all of the frames out of this center deep box because they are stuck to the frames via burr comb in the bottom box. So I'm kind of like doing multiple things now. I'm fixing a problem I was going to fix a few weeks ago and couldn't get done. So I've basically got, because I'm going to be going pretty deep in this, I've got my smokers literally packed full of material, but in case it goes out, I brought like some paper towels and some leaves so I can get it going again. I've also got Apivar in there. You know, there's just really a lot that has to go on today. I really kind of wish I would have brought, I can use this, I believe. Actually, I can use this. So I'm setting some of this stuff probably out of frame. It's because I got to move some of these boxes. In order to do this work, hopefully with no squashing. I didn't hear any squashing. That's always good. And of course, the wind decides to change directions on me. As you can see, these bees are like, eh, we're not going anywhere, Ed. That could actually create a problem, I'll tell you why. Because this needs to go somewhere. Oh, I knew that wasn't going to work out too well. But we're going to try to do this without getting stung today, right? It's kind of like the goal. Let's do this without getting stung today. All right. This surely did not go out already.
All right. Either way, I know that uh, I was going to do this. I brought this other camera because my one buddy on YouTube always wants to know what it looks like inside the hive. And I have this bad habit of not showing anybody what it looks like. So you can see that these are filled out pretty good. Lots of bees on here. What I've got to do, I've got to take one frame out. And I'm probably going to set that actually over here so you can see I've got everything set over here. I'm going to move that box back some and make some room in that so I can have a place to store that frame. But I really don't want to be out here too long, so I just want to get this done. So if I have to skip part of this and you don't get to see inside, sorry. So basically what I'm doing is I'm going to pick a frame. This one here on the end looks good. Move it over some without squashing the bees. And I'm going to do the same with the next frame. And I'm going to go ahead and pull this one out. Maybe or maybe not. I tell you what, that frame is heavy. You know, actually, I might be able, without removing these frames, I might just be able to just pull each of these up and be able to tell whether or not they are stuck. Let me go ahead and pull one of these out, though, so you can actually see it. And you know, before I do that, I probably better move this box over. Now I've actually got a shallow, a medium super box over there. And of course, these are deeps. See that? Every bit of that, on this side anyways, is honey. And then on this side, is honey still not capped? So now, you know, I could just lay this on the side too, I think. The next one, let me go ahead and show you this. I have no idea if you'll actually be able to see in there. I'm kind of guessing you won't, to be honest. There you go. Looks like all capped honey also. I'm also looking down. I see a lot of burr comb right there. Uh, let me see if I can get it in frame. Uh, probably not going to be able to see it. Can't tell if it's showing up or not because I'm actually getting a reflection off of this. Either way though, I got another frame of pretty much capped honey and I also hear a bee getting pretty angry close to my face which is never good all right this has actually got honey and brood comb in it This side is also honey and brood comb. So, this is actually looking pretty good. I see some larvae in there. Um, just gonna set this down and go to the next one. Everything is super sticky right now. 
Like you have no idea how sticky everything is. All right, this is one of the ones that is stuck. So I'm going to use my hive tool to raise up and break, hopefully, just the comb between the bottom and top. Feels like that it come out. I'm going to go ahead and move this one over. Then I'm going to move this one up. All kinds of cap brood. I see a few at the bottom of this. I don't know if you can see it or not. At the bottom of this, on both sides, kind of looks like queen cell. I see one right there. It's empty. Go ahead and set this one down. What you're actually seeing is that these frames aren't going down all the way because there is so much burr comb down there. So we're going to move this one too. And I can tell it is also stuck. So the last time that I did this when I said I was going to fix the problem that that I had and I couldn't really I couldn't get the top box off it's because of all this burr comb there's a lot like a really a lot this one also capped brood capped brood with some honey along the outer edges but again I've got to do this because I've got to put Apivar strips in the bottom box and also the top box. So I don't have any choice but to do this now. It's pretty hot outside today already, but most of the bees are out foraging. So I have that going for me. Like, they seem to be doing okay. They're not too mad that I'm getting in here as deep as I am. That uh, sound you never want to hear, I heard something scrunch. All right, that's kind of weird. Don't have a lot on this frame. But there is a whole lot on this frame. They're kind of like going wacky with how they're building out the honey. I don't know why. The next frame is the same way. Just going to put it down in there. I had a bee just flying on my arm. Actually, I got one that's getting pretty upset. Again, if you see me doing this circle of smoke, it's always because there's an aggressive bee. A really aggressive bee. I really always try to do this without wearing a bee suit. They are just so hot in the summertime. I don't really like to do mask either. The thing about smokers is though, you need to activate them every now and then or they will go out on you. So now that I've did my smoke, he seems to have gone off somewhere else. So I can continue on. Again, Doing the same thing. This one doesn't appear to be stuck, but it's a super heavy frame. Wow. I have no idea what they're doing on this one. A lot of honey. A lot of honey. You see the weird pattern on this side. The next one is all full of capped honey. Also, I have a bee on my leg, 
which is never a good sign. Probably the same one that was mad earlier. Here, I'm just going to shoot him away. Probably going to make him mad. Ouch, he just got me. Well, you killed yourself, dummy. Going to add some more smoke here because they do seem like they're getting a little more agitated. I don't know if you just heard that or not. Sweat fell on that and it literally made a singe sound. So I'm also kind of doing this at a bad time of year. You should never really have the hive open very long. But I've got to fix the one problem in order to fix the next problem. So again, I don't really like to do this, but I've got to do this. Again, lots of honey. Lots of honey. Some of it's uncapped. Pretty heavy frame. Here's another thing that I want to do is mostly honey, mostly honey. And hopefully this last one is there's just still building comb on this one all right so now that i've got all of that broken up like that i should actually be able to lift this box off and set it over there without causing too much of a disturbance i kind of want to go ahead and move these back where they're supposed to be except for the one that i pulled out So that way, when I put it back together, it goes pretty quickly. Now I'll have to use the hive tool to actually get that last little bit. All right, this sucker is heavy. Now, all this burr comb that's on the top, I really need to get rid of that. Ouch. Got stung again on the shirt. I need the Apivar strips. Probably ought to go ahead, smoke these down some. I don't actually mind getting stung. What I hate is when they get you on the face. Like, honestly, that is the worst. When they get you on the face or the neck, that is literally the worst. <sighs> I'm about to have to go get my friggin' face mask, I think. Let me go do that real quick. Because getting stung in the face one of these, I have numerous of these bee suits. And I basically just grabbed the first one because I just need it.
I know it sounds horrible, but right now I can't really worry too much about whether or not I kill a bee. I just got to get this burr comb off of here because it's going to cause problems in pretty much all future hive inspections. So I just got to do whatever I can to get that out of there. All right. So now with the Apivar, oh, there's another thing I need to do too. I've actually got some frames that are not filled out as far as they should be. And I want to rotate those. You know, actually, I think I'm just going to forget about that because it's not as important as the Apovar. All right, so the Apovar. Are we even still recording? It says we are. Let me pause this because we're about to run out of time. All right, so I've got the Apovar. The trick is it comes 10 in a pack. You put two in each of your road boxes. So there's going to be two in the bottom, two in the top road box. Shoot. I forgot toothpicks. Be right back. I just brought literally the whole entire thing of toothpicks out. So I need four per hive. Of course, my gloves are all sticky. They have these little feet where you don't necessarily have to use the toothpicks but I watched a lot of YouTube videos and a lot of people complained about those and said it was best to use the toothpicks so that's what I'm gonna do there's a little hole you see there it's like a little hole there's also a little leg but I'm just going to use the toothpick. You're supposed to drop it down into where the bees are most active. So that would be two or three frames in on either side. I'm going to do one on the two frames in. I'm going to do the other one on the second frame in. And then I'm going to reverse that on the top box. Does that make sense? Three frames in. I kind of want this. Some, actually, I'm going to go four frames in just because it looks like it's a little easier to get to here. All right. So that's done. Now it's just mostly cleaning up a little bit of weeds so I can put all this back together. And in 42 days, I have to remove those strips. So there's that one. One thing I know is the honey with the most will be on the outside. That's cap brood, so it goes to the inside. All right. Got that in there. Need my hive tool now. Line everything back up. Looks about even. Two Apovar strips in this one. Now you're supposed to pull your queen excluders, but they haven't done anything with that 
So I'm going to do three on this side because I did two the first time. And then I'm going to do two on the other side because I did three the first time. All right. Now, this goes back on. I've actually got a couple of bees on there. I just want to shake them off. Shaking this around a little bit. Get the bees to move some. This goes back on. Didn't mean to squash you, buddy. At least I'll let you out. All right. Then I got to get the bees off of this. Simple shake. Get them really mad, not like they're mad already. So this can go back on. Whoops, I forgot my top cover. And I got stung again on the finger through the glove. Awesome. Makes like three times I've been stung already. Ooh, I still have another hive left to go, right? All right, get our sugar water back on. That should make them happy or not, who knows. Top cover also has some bees on it. A lot of bees actually on that side. There's always got to be one that holds on with dear life. All right, now he's gone. So, finally, whoo! I'm gonna do the other hive. Not gonna make you watch it. Okay, I got the second hive done in about ten minutes. And the first hive actually took me about 40 minutes because I was trying to bring to you what I was actually doing that requires a lot of talking, pointing things out, and that sort of thing. Um, I went back inside and I got me a mason jar to put this comb in, which I saved to melt down for new frames. Oh, I've got videos on that. I'll post a link to that I've already done. Now, there was one still alive on there. So I blew him off, gave him another chance at life. There's always a lot of dead bees in Burkholm. No matter how hard you try, it's just the way it works. Some observations though, that I was glad that I did this because the first hive that I did, all but all but one outer frame in the bottom brood box and one outer frame in the top, which happened to be on an opposing side, had full comb drawn and they were starting to store honey in them. Um, the second hive though, only about half of the top frame had comb drawn. Now I didn't inspect the bottom. I just kind of did a quick once over because I just wanted to get in, get out since I wasn't educating you on how to do it. But what I'm getting at is the first 
hive that I did seems to be in more advanced stage by a couple of weeks maybe than the other hive and there could be a number of reasons for that and I really don't know why but I got the problem solved where the two brood boxes were stuck together I got Apivar in them and because they're not filling out any frames in this honey super I went ahead and left it on now in 42 days I got to take this all apart and take those Apivar strips out so when I walk in the house set a reminder on my phone on the calendar to remove those in 42 days and uh, might do a video on how to do that also you have to excuse me I'm like sweating like crazy those bee suits are really really hot um, I just walked over to the picnic table after that last segment and I kind of remember something I left out I was in the first hive about 40 minutes I got stung five times the bees didn't get aggressive until the second half of that so after I'd already been in the hive about 20 minutes they started getting mad I had to go put the bee suit on because of it right the second hive I got stung zero times but I was only in that hive about 10 minutes so everything I did in the first hive that took 40 minutes because I was explaining it to you and the second hive only took 10 minutes I did everything I did in the first hive it's just I didn't have to explain it and show you and all that stuff so kind of what I'm getting at is all the people that do these YouTube videos we all suffer to some degree whether or not you realize it or not sometimes it takes hours to record a video and then hours also to edit the video and make it ready for YouTube because we have to cut out all the crap otherwise you just wouldn't watch it so if you're into homesteading beekeeping raising dairy goats raising rabbits or raising chickens I'd appreciate if you could subscribe to my channel if you know somebody that does those things I'd appreciate if you could share this video and maybe get some interest in my channel I mentioned this before in another video but I'll mention it again because we're getting closer when I get to 500 subscribers I'm gonna have a giveaway the giveaway is going to be the silky big boy saw or a more a knife and I can't remember which model but they're kind of similar in price I think it's the bushcraft black either way they're both similar in price and then when I get to 1,000 subscribers I'm gonna give away a Sun Joe electric tiller and you can see numerous videos on my channel about that it's absolutely amazing I don't know how I did gardening for so long without it so 500 subscriber giveaway 1,000 subscriber giveaway subscribe share my videos like the content Truly appreciated. Thank you. God bless.